it's time for a vlog. No, it's not, I don't, I don't do the vlogging thing. I don't know. This is kind of a gigabyte update. I've got a lot of gigabyte news. I, I just got back from a trip for gigabyte. But the first thing that you should know is I bought this for me. Yes, this is something that I ordered from Newegg, just so you know, because uh, I also went to a gigabyte event and this and that are not related because I know you would probably wonder because I've got a lot of good news and everybody always looks a good news gift horse in the mouth because that's just how we roll, right? I mean, we've all learned to be sort of super skeptical and let's face it, with the Intel 9 series CPU launch, Intel has given us a lot of reason to be skeptical, quite unnecessarily as it turns out, because I mean, currently Intel is the clock speed and IPC king. So a lot of people really wonder what on earth Intel was thinking. I digress, I don't really care. I mean, you know, cat's gonna poop on the carpet. Intel's gonna Intel, I, I don't know what to tell you. This, this is an exciting product. So I feel like this is the first product from Gigabyte that really, because you know like the, the video card division and the motherboard division, they sort of merged a, a while ago instead of, I've been watching that with bated breath. And there's one reason that I got this card, the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, and that's because their engineers released a BIOS that will let you sort of push past the uh, built-in voltage overclocking limitations that come on the Founders Edition GeForce RTX. Plus also I wanted to see how many cats per second it is. I mean, let's, let's, let's be real. This is an irresponsible purchase. This is very expensive. And especially for gaming, this purchase doesn't really make a lot of sense. I mean, when you've got a, a, another graphics card like the Titan V or something like that, uh, you can use it for more professional things, especially once they unlock the driver because Nvidia gonna Nvidia. And we had the Titan V and the drivers weren't great and then Vega, and then the drivers get a lot better on the Titan V, which is, you know, a little sour, a little sour about the whole Code 43 thing. But in terms of cats per second and tensor cores, I cannot wait to get the, the footage for this out here. So I was peppering uh, Gigabyte with about a million questions on this. Well, pre and post purchase, because I can't buy an RTX 2080 Ti from like every single vendor because good Lord, uh, that would just be, that would just be shenanigans. But videos are coming on that, but there's more. But wait, there's more. Z390, are we talking about Z390? So Gigabyte invited me to an event in Miami. That's where I was. And we went boating, jet boating. They paid for travel expenses, but no other money has changed hands. There's no review or anything like that coming. But I do have a full brief, a full set of information that's hard to get your hands on for the full Z390 lineup from Gigabyte. Now to be sure, I think Intel is competing with itself a little bit here because the 8600K, the 8600, 8700K, those CPUs are no slouch. And if you're just gaming, there's not, honestly, there's not really a lot of reason to upgrade in my mind from the 8700K to the 9900K. Now I'm still doing testing, I might change my mind. The 9900K for virtualization and Linux and all those sorts of fun workloads, eight cores on that socket, that could be a lot of fun. I think. I would like to see more PCI Express connectivity. But it is interesting to see that Intel is allowing for an eight plus four plus four PCI Express slot configuration, meaning that you can have three PCI Express slots on the motherboard wired into the CPU at a by eight by four by four configuration. However, the IOMMU groups on the motherboards that I've tested so far have been grouped, uh, sort of gimped in that all three of those slots have been grouped together. So, not great for virtualization aficionados where you want to pass through a graphics card, but the Gigabyte boards, the Gigabyte boards do not do that. They're still using four lanes from the chipset. So they'll run it by eight by eight, pretty much all, all up and down the Aorus stack. And that actually may turn out to be much better from a virtualization standpoint. So still doing some testing, still doing some messing around, but I'm thinking that those are gonna be the better boards for virtualization just because of the IOMMU situation, if you're interested in, you know, full VFIO pass-through. Uh, 
And you should be, if you're getting an eight core Intel CPU, you should not get an Intel eight core CPU just for gaming. You should get it for content creation and all the other cool stuff that goes with that. That said, you will be paying a premium, both on the CPU and the motherboard. And we're gonna have a lot more information about that in the general nine series launch. Now here's the skinny on the nine series launch. We don't have any content on the nine series launch yet for CPUs because something weird is going on. A lot of the results are all over the place. The new CPUs are soldered, but they still have some thermal issues, not as bad as with the paste, I think, but there are still some thermal issues. And there are some results sort of from all over the place. So we ordered several retail CPUs of the 9900K and we're waiting for those to come in. We ordered those, you know, we, we were pretty sure this was gonna happen based on people that we were talking to and sources, let's just say sources. We were pretty sure this was gonna happen in terms of availability and production and some other stuff. So we ordered as soon as you could pre-order the 9900K, which you should never pre-order. And uh, we're still waiting on those. So we're not gonna have any, we're not gonna talk about anything realistically until we get to those. But with the Gigabyte lineup, they've done something really exciting. And the whole Aorus line, the VRM solution, which is like a 12 plus one sort of a deal, is basically the same all up and down the stack. The differences are to do with cooling. And the 9900K, 95 watt TDP, you can forget it. This might be the first Intel CPU where it literally does not make sense to buy this CPU unless you overclock it, unless you at least do multi-core enhancement. So like the 8086K, five gigahertz on one core out of the box. Most people don't realize that the 8086K can do five gigahertz on all cores. It has been to do five gigahertz on all cores, but not at the same time, because which CPU needs to run, which core needs to run at five gigahertz is not necessarily known. So it's not like Core Zero runs at five gigahertz and Windows says, oh, Core Zero runs faster than all the other cores. Let me move your program from whatever core it's running on to Core Zero. That's not how it works. Core Four might need five gigahertz. Core Four is gonna run at five gigahertz as long as all the other cores are not busy. It is not a clock speed problem with the silicon. It's power delivery and heat dissipation. And now with the nine series CPUs, it's power delivery on the motherboard side of things. I mean, there is a reason that the fully integrated voltage regulator on Haswell made a lot of sense in terms of response time and all this other kind of stuff, but it doesn't make a lot of sense in terms of heat production. So with the nine series boards, Gigabyte has opted to just go for the same VRM implementation on all of the Aorus boards up and down the stack. We're gonna talk about that a lot more in future videos. There's a lot of details there. There's a lot of sort of, you know, there's some, there's some fine print there. There are still motherboards that you're expected to buy if you're going for the 9900K and for the, you know, uh, the I, eight core, eight thread part or other parts that may show up in the stack. So you have to keep that in mind when you're doing your motherboard selection. But in general, you don't have to buy the absolute most expensive motherboard in order to be able to get your, your overclock. So that said, we also went on a jet boat. We went out and uh, it's a boat that goes like a jet. So Gigabyte makes us wet because of the jet boat because it splashes and you, you get it everywhere. So I took my camera out there, which is perhaps a bad idea, because salt water and cameras, they don't mix. But we, I did okay. I mean, this footage is, you know, pretty amazing. I also saw the Gigabyte graphics card lineup. So Gigabyte has integrated all of their RGB controls. They've integrated some really exciting things in their, their graphics card lineup. There's basically three models of graphics card from Gigabyte. Uh, I've got the Windforce OC, which is kind of the middle of the stack. Uh, there is a higher end fan uh, setup, a higher end 2080 Ti clocked even higher than this out of the box. Although this set some records and there's some interesting things on the 3D Mark website for level one using this card. This card did way better than the Founders Edition RTX uh, card, especially when we flashed the BIOS to unlock it to do more power delivery. It, before we flashed it, it didn't really get over like 67, 70 degrees doing things like 3D Mark. So, but the full, stack at the upper end, the upper echelon. Gigabyte's got this new fan that has LEDs in the blades of the fan. So, and it's digitally addressable. All the LEDs are digitally addressable. So you can actually make a pattern in the fan the way that the fan speeds. And so if you buy that super high end version of the graphics card at the top of the stack, then you probably should mount it vertically to show it off because good Lord, it's just, 
it's utterly ridiculous. I mean, look at this. This is just, this is crazy. And you can control it with the, the RGB software, of course, and, and all that, if you're into that kind of thing. But it was really exciting to see that, you know, the motherboard team and the graphics card team are working together doing a lot of really exciting stuff. And I hope that we see this on other graphics cards from Gigabyte in the future. But it makes it really easy because it's like you can get this in the 2080 Ti, the 2080, and the 2070 soon, hopefully, probably, maybe, possibly. And you also can do the, you know, WinForce OC and the various versions of that. And we're gonna have a full review of the card because it's honestly a really cool card. And there's all sorts of really exciting content coming up, but I just wanted to share my excitement and hopefully show a montage of what's going on with the, uh, you know, why, why I've been out of town and all this kind of stuff. But I honestly had a really good time on the trip, but I came away from the trip with a much more positive outlook on the state of the art in terms of motherboards and motherboard design and where Gigabyte is going with their particular implementation and their particular hardware. So I had a lot of fun, big thanks to Gigabyte. Again, travel expenses and all that kind of stuff paid for by Gigabyte, but you know, no money's changed hands or anything like that. Nothing, no shenanigans, but uh, I really did have a good time. And I was really impressed with the RTX 2080, 2080 Ti. I mean, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna not give Nvidia a hard time, but it actually, I mean, technologically, it is a really impressive product. So there's that. But also Gigabyte did a good job with their engineering that they had to do on the 2080 Ti and the bending and the software, and also unlocking the BIOS for us. So thanks Gigabyte, thanks Gigabyte for the trip. Had a good time. And there's a lot more follow-up content that goes with this, but I wanted to get this out just so you know. Thanks, I'm Wendell. You can find me in the level one forums if you have any questions, or it's like, what was that picture of? Oh my God, I saw a thing. It's, yeah, there might be some, you know, 3647 stuff in there. No, maybe, but can't talk about that yet. Because, <laughs> you know, that's not, it's not a thing. It's not a thing. Well, it is kind of a thing. Also some new X299 stuff. That's not a thing yet. Well, I mean, X299 is already a thing, but there's some new, I mean, you know, you know what I'm talking about. There's some new fancier, higher end CPUs. If you do need the CPU lanes, Honestly, probably gonna be talking about the new Threadrippers before the new Intel i9, because i9's not here yet. I'm Wendell, see ya.